Today we're making vintage Christmas decor. This is part of a collaboration. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I'm so excited to have been invited by Brenda and Jackie to join this vintage Christmas collaboration. Check out the links in the description box below. Okay, so to start off, I have four projects. The first one, I'm showing you a bunch of vintage ribbons I have to choose from. And I get these from Goodwill. And here is some more. I've got some ornaments of different sizes and shapes and some little jewels and snowflakes, a variety of papers and embellishments, just things that I thought may fit along with a Victorian inspired, um, you know, Christmas theme. So here's some paper too that I have, tissue paper. And then I have this little box that had ornaments in it. Decided to use it. We're gonna need some Jenga blocks. And I'm going to start off by taking my wood tent and I'm going to color this entire thing in this dark color. I know that with the Victorian theme, lots of things in their home, they decorated with dark colors. So they would have had at Christmas time more uh, burgundies and maroons and um, dark green jewel tones and dark wood. So I decided that this would be good for what we're going to be doing. After you put this tent on, you just go and wipe it off. And that's what I'm doing here. And then of course, you're gonna to need to let it dry before you do anything else with it. I just put mine in front of a fan until it's completely dry. I also did some little feet and you'll see that in a minute. So here's this beautiful paper. I have used this on another project and I'm just gonna go through and cut out the little images that I think would be cute. Go into this paper, I'm going to cut out some images from here too. And then I'm going to take this ornament apart and just save the top part to use in the project because I don't think the font will fit. So here's the little feet and they're almost like little pots. I'm going to use some hot glue and put these on the bottom. This is going to be like a standing curio, I think is what we could probably call it. It's almost like a Christmas card that is 3D. I was looking this up and I saw some things on Pinterest, um, some Tim Holtz things, and his are amazing. You should go to Pinterest and check those out if you're interested in doing this type of a style. So I'm just going to take some pieces of paper and I've cut them down to the right size. You know, just use your ruler and measure it down and then get your glue stick, put it in there and it'll hold this perfectly and you won't have any mess on your papers. The tissue is thin, so be very careful with that and just kind of, I'm doing this in fast motion because I always do way too much video, but I'm being very gentle with the tissue paper parts. So I've got the cute little girls in the top and the cute little girl in the bottom, just kind of near each other. And I didn't start off with the, with the theme of having this like a child's kind of project, but I think it kind of turned out that way, like a, a children themed little thing. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, again, with cutting down your paper and getting everything, you see how dark that green is? It's just really pretty. I kind of went by the colors also that were in the tissue paper, and um, that's how I helped, you know, kind of get an idea of what I wanted to go there. And I've also used a doily here. This is just a paper doily and I cut it down. Just a little piece of it. You can use ribbons or pieces of fabric, anything you like. I went ahead and used this pick and just cut it into pieces. And I'm gonna add a little like a Christmas tree in there. This is three dimensional. So you want some things that are flat. You want some things that kind of stand out, but I didn't want anything to be wider than the actual box itself, which kind of limits you to what you can put in there. You can also consider little miniature Christmas ornaments. You can do buttons, you know, whatever you like. So I'm just gonna place these here and there until I get the look that I like. I used to be a scrapbooker, so I really enjoyed that. Mixing patterns and, and you know, pictures and just really giving dimension to things. And I do try to include that in my projects that I do as well. I thought that the font was okay for these two um, Christmas signs that I'm adding. And then the little one in the bottom also, you can't really see that one that well. 
but um, I think that the pictures and the font suit the style. I'm just going to take this gold eucalyptus pick and just cut it into pieces and I'll be using the pieces for other parts in the project and uh, later on in the other projects. So I just want to add to this jewel here. I'm going to take these and these are plastic pretty much and um, put some hot glue on the back and then put them on the back of this little jewel and I am not sure where I got this from. Probably Goodwill but it could have been something that my daughter had. I don't know. Now I think I want to add this one on the outside to give a little more dimension. But first we need to place the jewel down. And then I'm going to add a little more. You gotta have a little sparkle when you're doing uh, Victorian type or old fashioned. Uh, I wouldn't call it retro. I, I kind of think of the 50s, 40s and 50s when I think of retro, but old fashioned or Victorian Christmas, I think of these types of things where they use jewels, they use things that they had for their decorations and they use natural greenery and I think my little greenery choices look pretty close to uh, being realistic. So I'm just going to take that piece, fold it up, make it look like it's intended to be that way, put it there. I've chosen this red and gold for the trim. I'm going to put a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom, so I'm just going to cut those down. If they fray too much, you can use a little hot glue and, you know, put those where they will stay. Or a piece of tape on the back will probably do it too, some clear tape. And I'm just going to go right on the edge. And I decided to flip this one upward because I want to do something special on the top. So this little bicycle ornament. Look how cute this is. I want to put it on the top. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that this style of bicycle was around in the Victorian era. I know I've seen pictures of things that are similar to this. So I think that it looks really good with this. And it's red. It matches. And we've got the little children that are featured inside the box. So... I think this would be cute right on top. So once the glue is dried, I'm going to take some of that gold ribbon and just tie a little bow because we want this to look like a Christmas present or a Christmas wish right on top of the box. So we're just going to make the little simple bow to go on the top and try to get it small so it doesn't look overly out of proportion. And I'm just going to glue it down right here on close to the handlebars. And then I'm going to continue along with some Dollar Tree table scatter. Just like that. All right. This is something that came off of the tree. Um, not the tree, the bicycle. It's a little holly leaves, and I decided to add those back in there. I think they look really good. They're miniature. They're cute. You could do a little gift in there if you wanted. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, on to the next project. I have got some of this tinsel that came off of a Dollar Tree something. I got some beads. I got some vintage uh, trim. I've got a little bead ball. And we're going to use the same greener that we used on the other project. And this is the Christmas card. Little Santa card. And this is a tart pan. This came from Goodwill. I found two of them. Can't wait to use the other one. So I'm just going to cut it apart, trim off the little hanger part, just so that it is almost looks like it's supposed to be round. I don't want to leave a flat spot on there. Make it look nice. And then I'm going to cut down a length of my ribbon or my ruffle trim, whatever you want to call it. And this is white and gold. So one project that I'm going to do is going to be like completely silver and white. And then this one is going to be more of a gold thing just in case you like the gold more so I'm just going around with the hot glue and because this is a metal pan you got to work quick or the glue will cool off too fast and you won't get any grip on your fabric so I'm gonna go around like this just using my silicone protectors on my fingers to push it into the corners so that it somewhat keeps the shape or follows the shape of that star Just like that. So a quick question while this is going on. 
Did any of you guys have parents or grandparents that decorated a tree in this style? This is not something that you really see anymore, um, except on Pinterest. I don't see other people doing this style, so I'm just wondering, do you remember this? What are your memories of Christmases when you were a child? Because I think this is really cool. You know, the silver and the gold, and it's a little too much for my rustic taste, but doing the projects is so much fun. There's so many layers to it. It's just some, it's a type of richness, I guess, that I feel doing these projects. Plush. Just, I love it. So, we got metal, we got ribbon, we've got this, this tinsel wrap that I pulled off. I think it was a Dollar Tree stocking ornament, but I saved it. So, going around here, I'm just getting the right amount to go around that uh, circular card. And then I'm going to start wrapping it, almost like a wreath just to bulk it up a little bit and I'm just going to cut some more pieces and go around until I get it as thick as I, I think I want it. And making sure that all those ends are tucked under so that you don't have any little pieces sticking out. You want this to have a, a nice finished look so just press them into the form and then we'll be placing it right down on top. Just going to add the hot glue. You can use a cool temperature glue if you would like on these projects because you're going to be touching a lot and a lot of small things. You do not want to burn yourself. So I'm going to put a glop of glue down there and put this little bead. I don't know what this is like a beaded ball. I think it was on a uh, Mardi Gras necklace, maybe. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit greener greenery in there. And then again on the other side. And I know that I want to put a bow on the top of the star. I found with doing these types of projects, if you think you've gone too far, just take it one more step and then you can quit. Right? Yeah. So I'm just going to put this right on the top just to add a little more gold to it. And you know, you could, if you have a star that you want to use, you could spray paint it. You could do whatever you would like, um, but since I'm using hot glue in here, I can always take this apart and use this project for this tart pan for another project. And I like that. I like that about hot glue. As long as it's not Gorilla Glue, because that stuff is permanent. Okay, so I'm going to make a little rosette now. I'm going to take some of that same red ribbon that we used before. I'm going to place it in the middle of the button. Just the red part, leaving that gold trim toward the top. Now I'm going to turn, make a little gather, and add a little more glue each time. You don't want to use too much glue because your bow will be too bulky. It'll get really tall instead of wide and we don't want that to happen. We don't want it to look like a pine cone. In other words, we want it to look like a flower. And we want to have enough room that I can drop a bead down in the middle of there. So the size of my finger with that protector is the perfect size. Plus, being able to get my finger on the inside like that helps me to press it down and hold it in place until the glue does its job. So here's our little rosette. I'm just pinching it down really hard to make sure it doesn't come undone. And then there, drop a little pearl right in the middle of it. Look at that beautiful little flower. I'm gonna put some hot glue back there and put it right there. I think it's cute. What do you think about that little flower? You can do that with any type of like a curved um, trim. You can do that. So I'm adding some more leaves there and then I'm going to tack down my ribbon on the sides just a little bit. Both sides straightening out the ribbon. It's not wired so it's kind of floppy and then I'm just going to cut the ends off in a slant. All right, we're going to make a hanger out of that same tinsel. If I would have had like a gray tinsel, I would have used that one instead, like a silverish gray. But this is what I had. It was white and then I had some red, but I thought this one looked better smoke and hot glue and then I'm going to add just a little piece of ribbon over the top just to hold it in place. All right and I decided I wanted to add some candy on there so I've cut apart a pick that I already had with little pieces of candy and I put a peppermint a little looks like a, a gum gumball maybe and then a little package candy and one pearl right there and I'm going to add another pearl over here and there it is. 
What do you think about number two? On to number three. I have some vintage little pie, whatever these are, jello molds, a little tree. I've got some paint and a brush. I've got some salt and magic snow mix, some tinsel, some wraps, a snowflake, a little piece of the fabric cotton, and then some pom-poms, and I'm also going to use some table scatter like we had before. I'm going to start off by emptying this into a pan and getting my paint and I'm going to take this stiff brush, it's like a stencil brush, and I'm going to put this all down over the branches of this tree. Doing it with this type of brush is going to, the little needles from the tree poke straight up into there and you get a lot better coverage. You're going to save yourself a ton of time, plus you get all the way down to the base of the tree. While it is still wet, you want to take your whatever you want to use. If you want to use just faux snow, you can do that, but I like to mix part salt and part um, faux snow together to get this look. Plus it gives it a little sparkle. And then there you go. After it dries, you're going to spray a little clear Mod Podge on it and that's going to help keep it from falling off. Let it dry. Now we're going to stack these two, make a little stand or a little base. I have some more that are smaller and I, for the love of, I don't know, I can't find them. I don't know where they're at. Probably in the Valentine stuff because I do a lot of Victorian at Valentine's. All right, while the glue is still wet here, I'm going to take some of that same mixture and go around the joint in the middle. Just like that. Why, you may ask, because in the beginning I thought I was going to leave it that way, but I do change it. So I'm going to take some of this fabric, snow, whatever this stuff is, batting. You can use pillow fluff. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to stick it down into here. I'm going to use some hot glue and then press it down so that it is pretty much level with the top. Then I'm going to be sure you're in a ventilated area when you do this now. I have the door open and a fan on. Don't worry. And you're just going to pack this onto here. It's going to be like an adhesive. It's a sealer, but it's also an adhesive. And it works really well for this because the hot glue is not going to give you even coverage. You'll have little streaks and roads. And this will give you a nice the ability to make an even coverage. So give that a minute, let it dry, and then I'm going to add a little border around the top. So I'm using this silver tinsel, which I guess I could have used the silver tinsel around that Santa Claus ornament too. Hindsight, right? Okay, so I'm making a little border on the top. Just tack it down with a little bit of hot glue, a couple of spots all the way around it, and it'll stay. And see, I just add a little and then just press it down. And there you go. So now we got to put the tree down in the base. We're going to decorate it first, apparently. We're going to take some white pom poms. And this is from a bag I think I got at Dollar Tree, I think is what it said. And I'm just going to add some white, the smallest ones, straight into the tree. They will stay if you just poke them in there. Just like that. You can leave it like that if you would like and just have the white, or because it's Victorian, I'm going to add a little something to it. Let's go ahead and secure the tree down into the base. So I'm just making a little hole, like a little nest right there with my fingers so that I can put the tree right down in it. I left the base on the tree because that's going to help it be a little more stable down in that snow. I have a stray snowball and we'll leave it. We're going to go with it. So in order to not burn myself, I'm using my tiny jewelry pliers. I'm going to put my little silver scatter here, put a drop of hot glue on it, and just press it into the tree here and there all over. When you're finished, this is the look. Now I'm just going to add a, the bigger, a few of the little bigger snowball looking things in the bottom, the little pom-poms. And so far, this is what we have. But you know, with these types of decorations, you're going to have to add a little bit more. Like I said, when you think you've gone far enough, add in a little bit more. So I'm going to add this around the middle because I want to add the star and that star would not have stuck on there without it. So that's why I wrapped it in the middle. And this is what we have so far. And I just put a little one of those um, table scatters right in the center. All right, I'm going to show you how to make a tiny star. We're going to use a piece of this pipe cleaner. I called it tinsel, I think. And you're going to do it, you're going to bend it just like you would when you draw a star. 
So simple. Then I'm pinching it with my fingers until I get it in the shape that it needs to be. And then I'm going to put some glue on the bottom part so that the point is upward and glue it to the tree. So this one's all silver. Silver and white. You could add gold if you wanted. Okay, so on to the next one. We're going to use this beautiful little sign that I got from a thrift store. This is a little, I don't know, it's a little wooden piece that I got. It looks like a, a headboard for a bed or something. If you don't have that, you can use a piece of thin wood like the size of a ruler and some of these little clothespins and make your own. There you go. See that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of this old ribbon that I have and again with the pick, I have this beautiful little dove, I believe it's a dove. And we're going to have some table scatter as well. I'm going to start off by covering up the bottom where it says tulip soap because the ribbon that I'm going to use is somewhat sheer and I don't want those words to show through there. So I'm just going along the natural border underneath her little, her little muffler, her coat. And just going along the bottom and then after it's dry I'm going to overlay it with two different ribbons. This one is a little sheer. It looks a little more opaque but uh, I assure you that it is fairly sheer. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. It's going to cover up that whole bottom section and then just like that trim off anything that you need to trim off and then I'm looking at what I want to do with this ribbon because I, I like the imprint or the embossing on the edge of this. So I know I want to use it in the project, but it's too big. So I'm going to put it on my on my mat and use my little rotary cutter and just go right up the middle, cutting it in half. Now when I do that, I still get that border and the sheer part just overlays it, just gives it a little something extra, and I like it. We're going to glue that on, and then for the top, I don't have as much room up there, so I'm just going to cut the rest of the ribbon part off, keep the trim, and we're going to add that metal trim up on the top and it is like a like a metal I, I don't know how to actually explain it but it, it is sort of like a metal so now we have the top now I'm just holding it in the place that I know it's gonna be in the middle of my little frame there and then pushing it right back down standing it up to make sure that it's gonna be able to stand on the bottom to give a little more support you can use these little jingle blocks or these tower blocks that come from Dollar Tree and in order to get mine to stand up correctly, I'm just going to stand it up and put the blocks on that way. So I know it's balanced. All right, so we're gonna go to these little fence posts because that's what they look like now and add some greenery. What a beautiful little girl. Isn't that a pretty image? She's so pretty, those little chubby pink cheeks. It's just a beautiful picture. All right, so don't be afraid to cut down your picks and your florals. You can cut them down. It came from the Dollar Tree. You can really stretch your dollar by getting the pieces that you want by just kind of working on them on your own. So there we go. Now I know on the top I want that little bird to be up there. But she needs something to sit on so she's not just looking strange up there. So we're going to put her on a nest. Look at that. I love this piece. I should have been protecting my fingers, but I was just trying to be careful. So you be super careful and use your protectors where you need to. Okay, so we're gonna add here and there and here and there. Y'all be sure to check out the links in the description box and go check out everybody's video. These are a great bunch of women. I've known them for a while now. They're super sweet, super talented. And I know that they would love for you to go over there and check them out. And if you're coming from my channel to see them, please tell them that Brandy sent you. And you'll be doing me and the world a big favor. Now I'm going to make a bow with this little metal stuff. I wasn't sure where I was going at first. I didn't know for sure if it would work, but it worked. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just like my goal to get to 10,000 subscribers. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to do it, and I'd love for you to be part of it by subscribing to this channel and following the journey. All right, so I'm just twisting this in the middle with some floral wire. Then I'm going to very carefully pull out the middles of those ribbons. It's kind of hard to do because it's super small, 
but it works. You could always use tweezers or some pliers to help you with that if you needed to, or you could do something on a larger scale, depending on your picture, what you want to put. Something I've noticed about this style of decoration is that they do a lot of 3D on the people themselves. So, you know, like you'll, the little hat will be 3D or it'll be a photograph of a face, but then the body is dimensional. So I thought, well, why don't we do that with her and just give her a bow that stands out in her picture? And I think this worked really well. So I'm just going to cut one of those little table scatter um, balls in half and then put it right in the center. It's going to cover up that wire and it's going to give a little more adornment to her beautiful little bow. Would you have used the metal? Would you have thought to cut down a ribbon like that to just dissect it and use it in different parts? Got to stretch your imagination a little bit. Look at all those elements and see what would work best for you and what you really like. And kind of test yourself, push your limits. So here's our sweet little girl. And there's our Santa star. The little kids, Kuro, Kurio, <laughs> love it. So you a gold person or silver person? I'm on the fence. I think I'm on the fence. It depends on what we're talking about, I believe. I'm so glad that you stopped by and that you've taken the time 25 minutes of your life to watch my video. It means the world to me. Be sure you go on and watch everybody else's videos. You're going to love it. Again, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.